let's start working on script 5a we are now ready to create a chart of monthly rainfall our goal was to prepare a time series aggregated to monthly and now we want to visually see how the rainfall changes over the course of the year so earth engine provides you with built-in charting functions we'll learn how to use them let's run the script so far we started for a particular year took the chirps data which is in pentard aggregated it to monthly data set and now we have an image collection of monthly images. You want to now create a chart, a time series chart showing what was the rainfall uh, in a particular region over the course of the year. Earth Engine comes with a whole bunch of charting functions that you can use to create charts directly within Earth Engine. The charting functions are inside of the UI module. So if you expand the UI module in the docs tab, you have UI.chart. <clears throat> Uh, you can chart stuff from arrays, you can chart for things from feature collections, or you can chart things from image collections. So we are we have an image collection, so let's look at all the functions. There are different helper functions that allow you to chart different things. We want to create a time series chart, so we'll use this function. UI chart image series, generate a chart from image collection, and you can plot uh, the values for a particular given region. So let's see how this function works. We'll create a variable called chart and run this function, ui.chart, control space to autocomplete. And we'll put ui.image.chart of series, control space to fill all the parameters. Let's fill all the parameters. What is the image collection that we want to chart? We will give this monthly collection. What is the region that we want to chart? So that's our geometry. We already have, uh, we don't have a geometry yet. So we need to define the region. So what region we want to do. I'm going to draw a polygon over my city of interest. So this is my geometry. So we say, compute the rainfall within this region. Now this particular region that I drew has multiple pixels. My chart can have only one value on the y-axis. So let's say month one, what was the rainfall? And I have like 10 pixels. What value should be presented on the y-axis? So how do we compute this, the result from multiple pixels? This reducer will be the mean value. So average rainfall within this region. Scale, it's chirps, so 5566 five, is the scale. X property, what is the value on the X axis? That is always the timestamp. So that's fine. We can skip that and we'll say, I want to create this. So this function will take the image collection, extract all the values and create the chart. We can print and see the result. So you can see this is the chart that was created. It's an interactive chart. You can see the month by month rainfall over the chosen region. And here the reducer is used to aggregate the values from multiple pixels to be plotted on the y-axis. So what the value here you see is the average of all the pixels within the region geometry that we've used. You can also see a larger version of this chart. If I use this pop-out button, it'll give me this larger version of the chart. I can also click this download CSV button. This will download the CSV data behind this chart. So if you're comfortable creating much nicer chart in R or other software, you can download the CSV and do the chart. If you like the chart here, you can download the PNG and use them in your publication. This chart is not very informative. Let's just make the chart a little bit more better. Uh, here we can set a title and the labels of the different axes. Once you create a chart, there's a function called set options. Uh, which takes a dictionary of parameters that allow you to set different things. Let's set a uh, title. So we'll say monthly rainfall. That's the uh, title. We can also set up the titles of the different axes. So vertical axis, this is the y axis. You can set the title to be uh, rainfall in millimeters. In H axis, horizontal axis, we can set the title to be uh, month. And you can see our chart looks much better now. And we have the axis labeled properly. 
and there are many many configuration options available to us so google charts is another product by google that is purely meant for charting it's used by many many people on the web so if you've seen any interactive chart on the web likely it's been generated using this api it's a free api that google provides for charting earth engine uses this api so if and again okay, there are a lot of options here so if you say i have a chart i want to customize it uh, you come here and whatever chart you want to customize you'll see all the options here uh, for customizing and all of the if, uh, customization options are given here so if you want to say i want to change the color of this line or i want to change the height of this uh, all of these options are available in google charts so all the options that i'm putting here they are the google chart options let's see some other options so i can display a, a dot for every data point i'll also change the line width you can see my chart looks nicer now i can see the, each data point and i can see the, the chart of that it's also good to validate this data set uh, when i first started working with this data set i said i know uh, this region i know the pattern of precipitation so i would test this out so i create this chart and it makes sense in, in Bangalore, there are two kind of distinct rainy seasons. There's a summer rainfall, and then there's a main monsoon season that comes towards that. So again, this makes sense. Uh, so again, I urge you to do the same when you're working with a new data set. Uh, try to validate it with something that you know, and to make sure that your analysis, your code is not doing things that are expected. How do we change the name of this precipitation sum? Is that the question? Uh, multiple ways to do it the name of this thing comes from the name of the band so if i see the each image the band name is precipitation sum so a simple way for us to do this is we'll just rename the bands so we'll just rename uh, this uh, thing we can just rename it to precipitation does this work oh sorry it's called select so we'll say there's a function called select that allows us to select a band and rename this so we can do this yeah. let me just see if this works okay so it changed the name here right whatever we wanted to do so there's one way to do it another way to do this is set your band name right here so similar to how we did this for indexes once you compute your image you can rename the band to be you know and it'll display the band name. You can also do this using the chart API. So a little more complex, uh, but uh, in this here, uh, these are all different series. You can have multiple lines. Each line is called a series, and you can have different options for a series. And I think uh, for this one is labeled in legend. You can set the particular label. And, if I'm correct, that should be, yeah. You can see, you can change the label to whatever you want. So if you can't, if your code is structured so that you can't change the band names before, you can use this option to do this. Over time, I realized that there are so many of these options and it's kind of hard to kind of make sense of all this. So I built an entire course on charting with Earth Engine. So if you're interested in customizing your charts and kind of learning all the advanced charts, I would suggest you look at this course material that I have on charts. This will be an excellent course that you can do as a self-study after this course. So you can learn more about charting. This is creating publication quality of charts in Earth Engine. And this explores all of the different options that I gave. You have so many advanced options which you can create directly within Earth Engine. And you can set, uh, try this out. Uh, Bigna, you can explain the exercise.